You mentioned a little while ago that our former Secretary of State and former First Lady Hillary Clinton has been making the rounds, laying out her argument for why she is opposed to a ceasefire, even after all of the many civilians um, who have been killed by Israel in this conflict. Um, she laid out her uh, argument in an Atlantic piece. She said that ceasefires freeze conflicts rather than resolve them. In 2012, freezing the conflict in Gaza was an outcome that we and the Israelis were willing to accept. But Israel's policy since 2009 of containing rather than destroying Hamas has failed. A ceasefire now that restored the pre-October 7th status quo would leave the people of Gaza living in a besieged enclave under the domination of terrorists and leave Israelis vulnerable to continued attacks. It would also consign hundreds of hostages to continued captivity. She also made an appearance on The View where she uh, bolstered this argument with her version of some of the recent history. Let's take a listen to a little bit of what she said there. The problem predates October 7th, and I think right. that's what President Obama was talking about, because let's remember, this is a very long and complicated history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My husband, with the Israeli government at the time in 2000, offered a Palestinian state to the Palestinians, at that time uh, run by Arafat, yeah. Yasser yeah, Arafat. Right. The PLO. And the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, which, by the way, took out of its charter violence against Israel. Mm -hmm. So you've got to separate the Palestinians who believe that there is some future of peace with Hamas, which believes it has to destroy Israel. Yeah. Those are two it's different separate, yes. organizations, right. and they have to be viewed in that way. Arafat turned that down. There would have been a Palestinian state now for 23 years if he had not walked away from it. There was another attempt I'm when sorry. I was Secretary of State to try to, you know, bring the Palestinians and the Israelis together. That didn't work out. Hamas came in and basically destroyed all of that and killed a lot of other Palestinians. So I think when President Obama says that, it requires us to look at the history. And of course, history holds all of us accountable. So what is your view except, of how except, she- Except Hillary Clinton who destroyed Libya. History holds all of us accountable except Hillary Clinton. But let's leave that aside. What I would like you to do, Crystal, is simply ask me one specific question from that. She made many, many statements. She talked about 2000, when her right. husband presided over the uh, attempted peace agreement, she talked about Hamas, how Hamas destroyed everything. She talked about ceasefires don't exist. Uh, you would not have time for another question if I were to go into all of that. So you use your, you know, you use your intelligence. You're very smart. Which aspect do you find most? Um, uh, challenging, and then I'll try to answer it uh, going through the details. Well, one of the uh, claims that she made there, which I hear repeated often, is that uh, it was on the Palestinian side that peace has been rejected, and she says there that Palestinians could have had a state now for 23 years had Yasser Arafat not walked away from the deal that uh, her husband was attempting to craft. So do you agree with that assessment? What does she get wrong there? Well, she gets everything wrong, and I'm going to try to explain why. I do know the details, and you'll, I hope the listeners will forgive me for going into the details. There have been four basic issues to try to resolve this conflict between Israel and the Palestinians, okay? Issue is, number one, borders. Where should the borderline be drawn between Israel and the Palestinians? The Palestinians accepted the position of the international community. The borderline should be drawn where it was before the June 1967 war. That is, the whole of the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, and Gaza would form an independent Palestinian state alongside Israel. The Palestinians accepted the position of the international community. All the legal bodies in the world, the International Court of Justice, all the political bodies, 
the UN General Assembly, everybody accepted the border should be what's called the pre-June 1967 border or the whole of the West Bank, including East Jerusalem and Gaza would be the Palestinian state side by side with Israel. Israel rejected that position. Israel wanted a part of the West Bank. In its last offer, in its last offer, it wanted approximately 8% of the West Bank. So it rejected the international community's position. Number two, under international law, East Jerusalem belonged to the Palestinian state because under international law, it's inadmissible to acquire territory by war. Israel acquired the East, East Jerusalem, the West Bank, and Gaza in the course of the 1967 war. It had no legal title to East Jerusalem, the West Bank, and Gaza. Israel rejected that position of the international community. It said it wanted parts of East Jerusalem. Number three, there's the question of the settlements that Israel has built in the occupied Palestinian territories, approximately now 700,000 settlers, illegal settlers under international law in the West Bank. All of those settlers are illegally in the West Bank. Right now, as we speak, engaging in a low level, at this point, ethnic cleansing in the West Bank. Israel wanted to keep under its sovereignty approximately 80% of those settlers. And finally, there's the question of the Palestinian refugees and their descendants under their descendants since 1948. Israel said that it would not allow any of those uh, refugees to return under what's called the right of return, uh, the, the international law, which says uh, refugees have the right to return to their homes after the cessation of hostilities. Israel said no. Now, on all of those questions, borders, Jerusalem, settlements, refugees, on all of those questions, the Palestinians were willing to make concessions. And in, in, 2000, in the year 2000, President Clinton put forth what were called the parameters, December 2000, parameters for resolving the conflict. All of those parameters required concessions from the Palestinians on the basis of international law. None of Clinton's parameters required concessions from Israel on the basis of international law. Now, I want the listeners to hear the bottom line. In January 2001, both the Israeli side and the Palestinian side accepted what were called the Clinton parameters with reservations. Both sides said, we accept with reservations. It is factually untrue. President Clinton, who's an extremely smart guy, extremely smart guy with a voracious intellectual appetite, he's unfortunately also an exceptional liar. And in his memoir, which I read, he simply lied about what happened 
to his parameters that he put forth in December 2000. And Hillary Clinton, who is apparently quite smart also, as smart as her husband, I'm not sure, but no question, a very smart woman. She is also an inveterate to the point of pathological liar. That's not, you know, I'm not talking, I'm not trying to be, um, I'm not trying to be uh, uh, ad hominem. I think there's quite a lot of evidence going back to why she lost the election that she's a pathological liar. She literally can't see the lies that she's uh, uttering. So those are just factual questions where I can say with a great deal of confidence, because I've read the entire diplomatic record and I'm willing to debate anybody on it, that what she's saying is false. It's doubly false. It's false because the Palestinians accepted the terms for resolving the conflict, which have been developed and ratified by the whole international community. Just to give you one example, every year, every single year, the United Nations General Assembly passes a resolution called Peaceful Settlement of the Palestine Question. And every year, it lays out the terms which I just described. The terms of the settlement are anchored, embedded in international law. Every year, the vote is the whole world, which is to say, approximately 190 countries on one side embracing those terms, including the Palestinian representative organizations. And on the other side, it's usually the United States, Israel, and several South Sea islands the Marshall Islands, Palau, Tuvalu, Tonga, on the other side. Now, if any of your listeners have doubts, which surely they have the right to, all they have to do is Google peaceful settlement of the Palestine question, United Nations General Assembly. And that resolution will come right up on the screen. It's a little more complicated to get to the voting record, but with enough uh, conscientiousness and ingenuity, which I lack on the web, I don't know anything about computers, mm -hmm. um, they can easily find the whole world on one side, the US, Israel, and some South Sea Island atolls on the other side. That's the real record. And if Hillary Clinton wants to debate me on it or her husband, I'm perfectly happy to do so. Well, and I would be perfectly happy to moderate that debate. I think that would be great for the country to see. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new. We wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.